In our last episode, we finally crossed the border into Western Australia. Eww. Our first stop was down near Lake Argyle. We spent a few nights at a free camp near the spillway until we locked in our tour. Our plan was to stay at the spillway, then check in to Lake Argyle Resort on the day of our tour. The spillway turned out to be a great spot to relax and have a few down days. A generous amount of water was about to have a refreshing dip. We should mention the sunset's quite nice as well. With the sun setting behind the ridge, the sky would light up. After a few nights of R&R, &R, it was time to go check in to the Lake Argyle Caravan Park, which was only 15 kilometres away. The guys on the gate were fantastic and settled us in to a nice shady spot. They even let us check in at 9am which was superb. We made the most of all the on-site facilities and relaxed until our sunset tour. We'd heard from a few people that the sunset cruise was awesome so we decided to splurge out and do it. The orange boat was already full when we booked so the lovely girls at reception got us on this tour instead. It's exactly the same thing, just with less seats, which means less people. Matt, our tour guide and captain, was fantastic. He was very knowledgeable at all the sites and answered all questions thrown at him. We got to see wallaroos, a handful of freshwater crocodiles and a large variety of curious fish. Check out this guy, he got pretty close to the boat. We even learnt a few things about Lake Argyle and how it came to be. Plus we got to hold some local zebra rocks. After our history lesson we got to finally jump into Lake Argyle for a swim. It was then time to sit back on our noodles with beer in hand and watch that sunset. Once everyone had a drink in their hand, Matt floated the nibbles out to us. Wow, talk about service. What a great way to finish off an excellent tour. We think it was well worth the dollars. Once we got back to land, we had already decided we'd continue to splurge and have dinner and drinks at the restaurant. Although a tad pricey, the food was delicious. We sat back and enjoyed the night listening to the live entertainment.
The following day, we decided to get up for sunrise. It was quite spectacular seeing the different colours in the lake as the sun rised. I had a quick swim in the infinity pool before packing up and continuing on. Alright guys, so we've just left Lake Argyle, uh, caravan park, that one night there to do the cruise. Had a good time. Yeah, it was a good night. And now we're headed into Kananara to get some more fruit and veggies. Since we crossed over the border we had to get rid of them all, so looking forward to an apple. And then we're gonna go find campsite for the night. So we made it into Kananara just after lunch and headed straight into Coles to get some fruit and veg. We then headed out of town to find a camp spot. Buttons Crossing was our campsite of choice for the night. Located just north of Kananara, it was a perfect spot for an overnighter. Kurt had a few flicks off the bank while we kept Rusty a safe distance away from water's edge. There were signs warning of saltwater crocodiles, so you always have to be on alert. The next day we headed back into Kalanara to grab a few more things. We had two slight detours before we got there. The first was Ivanto Crossing, a popular well-known water crossing up here in the Kimberleys. With the water levels looking doable, we set up the cameras and took off. The first part of the crossing was quite small, and the second part of the crossing was a longer distance, pretty much twice the length of the first part. As you can see, we managed quite a ride, nothing too scary at all. Now for our second slight detour before Kananara, the Hoochery Distillery. A popular spot amongst the locals and a highly suggested place to go check out. You know us, we're always up for a bit of mid-morning rum tasting. Inside was surprisingly very large and spacious. We had a good look around before sitting down and getting into the serious stuff, the tasting palette. Ames wasn't too fuss, but I didn't mind them. So we finished off our outstanding errands in Kananara and headed out of town late in the afternoon to find camp. Not far out of Kananara, we were told to pull off the road to make way for these monsters passing by. We pulled into this RV friendly rest stop for the night. Nothing fancy, but it was free. I finished vacuum sealing the rest of our meat and popped them into the freezer, all stocked up and ready for the gib. The next day we tracked south. We decided to do one more detour before officially starting the gib. The famous Bungle Bungles. 
We pulled into Spring Creek Rest Area, which is one kilometers from the turn off to Bungles and set up camp. So we got to camp and we set up and the first thing that Rusty does is roll in the dirt. It is not funny, you are a filthy dog. Look at all that dirt, you're not coming in the caravan. No. She had a quick wash in the creek, then we settled her into the van while we popped into the bungles for the afternoon. Armed with a map, we devised a plan. Our plan was to shoot straight down to the domes and the cathedral. See what time we had, and if we could, squeeze a quick trip up to the Echidna Chasm. The road in was terrible. It was very windy, corrugated, had border crossings and mega dips and ditches. Probably up there with one of our top five worst roads in Australia. It took us 50 minutes to drive the 51 kilometers into the ranger station, then a further 20 minutes to get to the Dimes car park. Here we are at the Bungle Bungles in Western Australia. About to go check out the domes and the cathedral. Alright, let's go. So let's go. We hiked straight into the cathedral, which was pretty timid two kilometre walk. Mainly flat with one section you had to climb. It was stunning. Not a lot of water inside, but still grand once you see it. After a good 10 minutes taking it in, we turned around and headed back towards the dome walk. The dome walk isn't very far from the car park at all. We had actually passed it as we were trekking in towards the cathedral. Only a short 400 meter circuit, but still cool to see the famous stripy domes up close. Pretty happy with our times, we decided to still duck up to see the Echidna Chasm. So glad we did, this spot was grand. Even though we were late in the afternoon, we still had a really nice one kilometre walk into and up the chasm. The narrow walkway and towering cliff sides were magnificent. Only spending a few minutes up to the very end and we headed back to the car. As we were driving out, the sun was setting on the northern part of the bungles. Colours were projecting a majestic red glow on the cliffs. Up early the next morning, we headed back up along the highway towards the actual start of the Gib. We decided to free camp 10km east of the official start, 
as I had a bit more Gib prep work to do on the nav. Hi guys, so we were in a bit of a pickle yesterday at um, Ivan's Ho Crossing. There's a dirt road that leads up to it um, on the other side of, um, not Kananara side, the other side. There's a dirt road and there's a big dip. And in the dip, there's like a big roller coaster. And um, it wasn't, I was going a bit too fast and it was probably the worst um, the car's articulation with the caravan we've experienced. And um, I was worried that the Navara chassis would snap in half um, luckily it didn't but um, one of the mounts that holds the canopy and the tray onto the chassis has actually um, uh, snapped through and I'll just quickly show you that now and so there's the mount you can see um, there should have been steel here, but it, it, it had smashed, split off completely and gone. And there was a bolt going through here that bolted it down. Um, so that's, you know, that whole piece is just gone. Um, so what we've done is we um, got a block of timber. That's a block of timber there. And that's actually supporting the tray now. And that'll actually hold a lot a lot more strength than what the little piece of steel was doing um, so yeah that might be a good result till we get it all fixed up so overall um, not the end of the world we can get it fixed up properly weld a new bracket on and all that um, but surprisingly really happy with the chassis on the nav that that's not been affected because that was a massive um, roller coaster effect that was going on so um, hopefully that's the worst that'll ever happen to the to the car which is good because um, I think after the Gib there's not much more um, really bad roads that we're gonna go on so um, yeah pretty pretty impressed overall <laughs> alright cool well we'll get back to the Gib preparations it was time to prep Rusty for the gib with a nice shampoo, a wash and rinse. Then followed by a pedicure. She's one spoilt dog. She's been a lot more happy since her dental surgery, which has been great. All ready to tackle the gib in the morning, we sat back around the campfire and I practiced my star shots on the camera. Well, the day is finally here to start the gib. Woohoo! Join us next time for the start of the Gib River Road Journey Part 1. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and leave us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Cheers, legends!